Welcome to the KIPPS Personal Trainer Application Podcast. My name is Tyler Valence and I'm the president of KIPPS and Time to Train Fitness. Today we have a great topic for our listeners. We're going to talk about event planning with somebody that's been doing it for a long time. We have Janice Jakes, the owner of Fitness Fest Events and Conferences. Janice, first, thank you for coming on the podcast. Thank you. It is my pleasure to be here and I'm excited to share uh, my background and my experiences. Thank you. Great, great, great. So for our listeners, can you give a brief description of what Fitness Fest is for those who are unfamiliar with it? You bet. Fitness Fest Conference and Expo was formed 23 years ago, and it's a fitness and wellness event conference for fitness professionals, your personal trainer, your group, your group fitness instructor. We have a little yoga and Pilates and definitely aqua since that is my background. Mm -hmm. So we've been doing live in-person events, like I said, for 23 years. And most recently in the past year or more, we have uh, created more virtual events, more, we've got some live stream workshops that were really popular that um, we sell separately. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, of course, due to COVID, um, needed to take our live event, which is typically in Phoenix, Arizona in April, we had to take that live event and transferred to September of 2020. And that in, that also turned into virtual. <laughs> and so uh, we're pivoting, as we say, and mm -hmm. um, it's working out quite well, though, actually. And a lot of the the people who are scared of the online and the Zoom and, and all that, um, it worked out really well this past September. So um, we're going to do another one just like that in April. But then we are planning our live event because I know we'd all really like to be in person. So September, mm -hmm. we're planning our live event in Phoenix. So very, very nice. Very nice. So um, that's a great little segue there to, uh, we'll say, talking about Fitness Fest in general, but for those that are looking at doing events, creating events for yourself. When did you kind of realize that, okay, this event can be something like this could be a great avenue for a business? You know, I've got to say it was the first year. Mm -hmm. um, before 1997, I did a couple small um, aquatic trainings. And so then I formed the the bigger event. Um, well, it didn't turn out to be so big. It was only 66 people in our first year, but uh, with different formats besides Aqua. And we had it at a health club in Chandler, Arizona. So that very first time, even though we didn't have as many people as you might want uh, for growth and for you know revenues, the energy Mm -hmm. and the excitement and just the self-satisfaction and also, of course, the great feedback and, and feeling and seeing the energy and the great responses and from the participants, from the attendees, just I just knew that I had to figure out um, how to continue with it. And mm -hmm. right off the bat, I continued with it being an annual event, and and actually, we it was a two it was two times a year. Uh, we went to Tucson after about the second year. So many people came up to us from Tucson. So mm -hmm. many fitness professionals. So we said, okay, we're gonna we're gonna go to Tucson. So we were actually in Tucson for at least eight or ten years. We were mm -hmm. at the University of Arizona for several years. And uh, we were at Naturally Women, which no longer exists, but we were at there before we were at the U of A. So we had both of them. And then eventually we said, okay, Tucson wasn't working out so well. So our main event is in Phoenix. And then of course, like I said, the, the virtual events that we have. And then we're also, we, when I say we, I have an amazing team and I couldn't do it without them. We are, after about I would say 10 years into our fitness fest, um, we were approached by the Native American communities, um, a mm -hmm. couple other organizations like FAI, for example, and they saw how successful, successful we were. They saw how good we were at event planning mm -hmm. and executing. So we've been hired by uh, the Native American communities in particular and other organizations to help them organize their events, whether it's small, or big, like from finding the venue to marketing and all that and everything in between. So, so we consider ourselves uh, fitness and wellness event planners. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm debating in my head right here where to ask you next uh, with these mm -hmm. questions because I un uh, unpacked a lot right there. And I think the did I, did I sidetrack there too much? <laughs> <laughs> just a tad, just a tad, but uh, <laughs> I know you enough to, to plan for it. So <laughs> that's my middle name, yes. Tangent. <laughs> <laughs> so with event planning in general, so you had uh, the Phoenix one, you had the Tucson one, then uh, the Native American event started rolling in. With all of these, where do you usually start? Where does this whole process start when somebody comes to you or even for yourselves? Uh, what are some of those first initial steps? Whoa, well, you know, I know that one of your initial questions uh, when you sent it to me was like, when do we start planning? So when we start planning for the Fitness Fest Conference and Expo, which is typically in April, uh, when it's normal situation, we start planning right after our live event, like wow. right after. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, and at least a month after is when we already start accepting applications. It's just so much of a process to decide on the formats, to decide to make sure we have the balance. Like for us, we have, we need to attract the personal trainer. We need to attract the group fitness instructor. We need to attract that person who really wants to listen and hear a lecture, the person who really wants to be dancing and, and jiving. So we have to carefully select the speaker lineup uh, mm -hmm. based on their credentials, based on their their selection. Uh, we want, we want our, our regulars, very popular presenters like Lynn Kravitz, for example. We always want them, but we need new stuff as well. So looking at the balance of the variety of presenters, the variety of formats. So we start collecting all that information. Um, we sort it out as a team. We decide on what's trending, what's what's uh what's going on you know currently and uh and then we just start you know sorting and all that and then of course the marketing is such a huge piece now if you haven't already had your venue that's a decision as well but we have been at the beautiful sheridan it's like a resort and it's right outside of phoenix it's actually in mesa arizona so we're sticking with that venue right now but back in the day uh, and we've been through several different venues. So um, before the Sheridan, we probably we were at the JCC, we were at another hotel. So we were probably at five or six venues over there, our 23 year span. So carefully selecting a venue, if people are looking to do this is very important. Um, you want to look at what their hotel attrition is. You want to look at their food and beverage minimum, or if you're starting small, maybe you just want a health club or a gym. If you do pick a health club or a gym are they going to close classes what kind of freedom do you have what kind what you know what do they want from you um or and what can you give them too so um i hope that answered your question yeah yeah well first you kicked it off by letting the cat out of the bag that some of this podcast is pre-scripted you can't just say that right off the bat there oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> I, I've joked about it in previous podcasts that there is a level of uh, I'll say well, you got to be a little bit prepared. So yeah, <laughs> but uh, small. I don't want you to randomly ask me some embarrassing question that's going to humiliate me. So, <laughs> duh. Well, um, with <laughs> events and also the planning with it, I can only imagine what goes into all those different steps with it. But I think I want to touch on one of the items you mentioned with what's new. How are you guys usually finding out what's new? I would say you ladies are finding out what's new. Was it social media, Facebook, Instagram, looking at other conferences? Where do you guys usually get that kind of information? Well, we, we get it from other a lot of sources. We we do check out other conferences, but really we we look and ask, we survey our 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 customers, our customers are our bread and butter. Our customers are our lifeline. We have such a loyal following and obviously we want new blood. We, we want new customers. We want more revenues. We want people who've never heard of us, but our loyal customers, some of them have been coming to us since day one, 23 years ago. Wow. And some of them, even though they don't need their continuing education credits every every year some of them come everywhere just because it's so fun it's so exciting the energy mm -hmm. the connection so we really rely on them to tell us 
what they like, what they might like. We, we are not afraid of feedback. And most of the feedback from our loyal attendees is, is very valuable. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we, we definitely look at that. And I will say that in 2021, um, I don't want to say there's a shift, uh, although there is a shift. Uh, and I believe that fitness professionals as human beings are looking for self-improvement, self-development, a little more peace of mind. Uh, and, and I think that all plays into being a good instructor, a good human being. So we've got a little bit of that coming up in 2021 as well. And of course, that doesn't mean we're all fluff, but of course we've got, we've got TRX this year. We've got um, you know, some great lectures, functional training, all, all that good stuff. And of course, well, right now what's trending, of course, is, you know, how to do a virtual workout, you mm -hmm. know, and what kind of equipment to use and, and how to make yourself look good. And so we've got that, we've got some marketing stuff. So, so checking out all sources, yes, social media, seeing what's going on, but more our own customer base and, and just being realistic about what, what our community wants, mm -hmm. what our community needs. Um, of course, active aging is just so popular. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe in the words not popular, but it, it, it's, it's here. And mm -hmm. it's very important for us as fitness pros to give the active older adult or the older adult period some some hope for movement and quality of life and i think we've got a great program we we've, we've had at least for the past i'd say 7 or 8 year, years been really strong in the active aging uh workshops and programming oh yeah oh yeah and uh, just to briefly touch on that uh, just because in the last hour that was actually something that a mentor of mine told me looking at your community looking at your audience for their advice on items because yeah. that's who you that's your bread that's and butter serve right? exactly yeah. so asking them questions not being afraid to ask them questions yeah. giving them surveys the opportunity to voice their opinion uh, i mean we can say that people are very opinion in these days so giving them an <laughs> yeah, right. avenue to express it i mean what's not to, to to jump on that even more because they will then feel a part of it and i think that that is something that I've noticed. Uh, I've spoken at yeah. uh, a handful, maybe a little more than a handful of conferences, uh, of uh, almost all of them. Um, and I would say that Fitness Fest, when I spoke at uh, Fitness Fest live, I got to make sure that I differentiate them, which was in 2019. There is a different vibe about it. It's mm -hmm. uh, a community feel to it that something that and i'm not speaking negative about the other ones i've spoken at um but it's it's more than just showing up and going to your room and uh, potentially not even seeing anybody from the staff there uh it's very the staff is very hands-on um very helpful that uh you know the staff i will i will tell a small story here that i felt bad actually when uh one of the staff members who was female, she had to carry my big heavy box. And <laughs> I felt bad. I was like, I'll, I'll carry these. She was like, no, I got it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I showed up and it was all there. So I can't yes. be upset about it. But <laughs> Thank you for saying that because we really pride ourselves in that. And, and if you want to use the word customer service, it's that we just really feel it. Our team, myself and my team really feel it. And we love it. And we're passionate about well, first, let's talk about the presenter. Like you said, when you presented for us, the presenter, her, his or her job is to do what they do best, give their presentation, whether it's a lecture, whether it's a workout, and not be nervous and not be worried about the technical difficulties of the PowerPoint or their equipment or getting, lugging their bag uh, or having their own, you know, forgetting their water. We we want to make sure that the presenter is feels welcome uh, and is successful. So our staff, uh, my team, and then of course we have a, a big uh, volunteer staff and a lot of them have been with us for years. We've got volunteers that fly in from other states who wow. used to live in Arizona and fly in from other states because they love the, we, they love our fit family. They mm -hmm. love, they love the feel of fitness fest. And again, we pride ourselves in, 
the customer service for the presenter, for the vendor, for the sponsor, and of course, for the attendee. And we do a lot of, I wanna say, hand-holding for some people who may not be able to register online comfortably. Um, I, I gotta tell you a little story about <laughs> this. You know, of course, everything is online now, right? You register online, you choose your workshops. Okay, it's, it's, it's that way for us as well. But we had this one <laughs> instructor who one attendee, and this was, I think, 2019, or no, I guess it was last year. And then of course we had to postpone it. So she couldn't register online for whatever. She didn't even call us, didn't mention it. All of a sudden I get in the mailbox, a, What's a mailbox? piece of paper. It's not even a full piece of, you know, it's like a scrap paper that was torn off with her <laughs> workshops, handwritten in pencil, the workshops and the time she wanted them. <laughs> and a check. I'm like, okay. So then we, you know, we had to go online and register for her, but you know what, that, that, that's okay. You know, mm -hmm. we, uh, we talked to a lot of people on the actual telephone and <laughs> I, I got to tell you, that's really one of my favorite things to do oh, is no just chance. talk to what I said. I know Janice that you like to oh, talk. Oh yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> I know a little too much, but gosh, I'm just so passionate about what I do. I'm so fortunate to be able to do what I do, just the energy. And I have so many moments of remembering how I felt. And one, one, we were um, at Arizona State University, ASU for at least five or six years. And I remember standing in the room and seeing 60 people jiving and dancing and bump into the music. And I just had goosebumps all over my body. And I'm like, wow, I did this. We did this. Mm -hmm. And it is such a great feeling. Oh yeah. So. Oh yeah. And we're gonna continue on that in a second. I just wanna share two experiences that I will say you will not get at a Fitness Fest conference. Uh, one of them, and Janice, you know that I'm very, uh, I'll say good with technology. Um, and uh, one of the conferences I attended, I actually had to help the tech supervisor that was there with making sure that my, my presentation worked. Uh, I always bring an assortment of adapters just to make sure that I'm just over prepared for it. And I had to help him, the AV guy, with making sure my presentation ru was running because they were having a, a issues with different rooms there. Yeah. Uh, but the second one, I mean, this was at a different conference that uh, I was having to find out where my room was at a big, uh, uh, big uh, event facility. And I was lost. Yeah. And but yeah. there wasn't really anybody to uh, to help you out. It was kind of a uh, just make sure you show up kind of thing. And uh, I will say that it. I was looking at the, the maps inside of the the hotel looking at the map that uh, I was given by somebody that worked there that was like, hey, you just go here, here, here. I was like, uh, I don't, I, how do I even get there? And just taking yeah. random elevators and, and escalators trying to Ugh. find out where it was. Um, but- uh, That's such my, a terrible feeling. And it, you know, you maybe were more confident about it because I know you and maybe <laughs> you weren't, but, but, but picture someone who is already nervous as heck mm -hmm. and somebody who's new and a first presentation. I mean, we're all, I, you know, I've been presenting for 23 years, more than 23 years, and I still get nervous. And if you don't get nervous a little bit, you're probably not truly giving it your best. And, 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 you know, of course you need to be confident, but mm -hmm. you know, my, my point is like, like how, you know, how horrible to think you might be late and to get all nervous. And then he just really shakes you up. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's definitely a part of it. I think that those extra steps that uh, your team does to make sure that it, it, the speakers feel wanted to. I think that that's really the thing that yeah. I could share is that the speakers do feel wanted, that they feel like, uh, you know, a kind of a celebrity, that they are, are taken to their room, that you know who your volunteer is that if you need anything, they're going to go get it for you. And you, as a, uh, someone like myself, I feel bad always taking it. I don't want to say advantage, but using those resources, because I know that those of these volunteers are doing multiple things, but uh, yeah. at the same time, I know that they are doing their job, which uh, they, they like to do it. They like to help out, which is part of uh, this next question about community. They're part of the community of it. And with fitness fest in general, 
how do you how do you think the community aspect builds within events? Uh, talking about fitness fest, but also with advice for others. How do you think you build community? Oh wow, and, and that's a great question. It doesn't always get asked, and it is a great question. So. There's so many ways that Fitness Fest has built community. And like I shared about volunteers that come back even from other states and they want to help, you know, they want, they, they don't, they're, they're not getting paid for this, right? They're spending, twelve, you know, slave labor 12 hours a day and they're loving it and they're energetic and, and helpful and, and thankful to us. Like they thank us. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so um, we build a community. Building a community within the fitness community is is so important um, so that we can help serve our clients, our students. And I feel that Fitness Fest really does that well um, because of our team, because of our passion, because of our customer service, because of our non-diva. We have a, a, a no diva rule <laughs> and within ourselves and and who we have for presenters and as well, because we, you know, we're all approachable. They're all approachable. Um, we're all equal human beings. Um, and so there's, there's a couple um, things that I just even learned recently about how the connections and the community has spread. And like, if I don't find out, if, if I don't, if someone doesn't tell me, Hey, I had a great connection and I built a community because of fitness fest, then there's so much stuff out there that I probably don't know some great things that have come out of it, but just two weeks ago, I saw one of our um, our presenters, uh, Sarah Williams, who actually lives in in the Phoenix area, and she does um, uh, uh, paddleboard yoga, actually, um, among other things. But I saw her post that that she was at our event a couple years ago, and because she connected with Kella Price, who was an attendee at the time her daughter is in some pageant hmm. that Kella represents some charity pageant. I'm like, wow, I didn't know that you connected with her on that. Mm -hmm. And then um, Jacque Silvas, who is an amazing woman and a presenter for us for the past few years, she calls me and us the opportunity fairy, because when she, she used to work in a corporate job and, and then she, she decided to do a bar above uh training with fitness fest about five or six years ago and just fell in love with fitness fest and so many opportunities have come about because of that original you know that original fitness fest experience for her so there's so many connections and so many different smaller tribes if you will that have been formed and so so much that we don't even know about it so we love to hear these stories about the the communities that have been built within and outside of Fitness Fest. Yeah, I, I mean, that's one of the points that fit pros want to attend conferences is to make these connections. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, I have been to conferences where it's just a lot harder to do those um, due to the size of it or um, it, it just feeling mm -hmm. like a conference where you just show up, do your thing, and that's kind of it. Um, but, uh, that's definitely a reason to attend conferences. So the ease right. of it at Networking. fitness fest is exactly the positive areas that you can do that. I mean, if it just facilitates it, it just makes it a bigger benefit. I know that, and I, I admitted this in a podcast, uh, with, uh, Dr. Jan Schroeder, um, who <clears throat> used to be with idea. I think she should be the director of ed, um, for idea. But uh, when I was an undergrad, I didn't take advantage of them. She would always provide opportunities for students to attend IDEA for free if they volunteered some of their time. And I didn't at the time because I didn't understand that. I didn't understand that importance in the fitness industry to meet others, connect that way, and really just give yourself a jump start in certain areas. And, uh, you know, looking at it now, I wish I would have. And I think that that's one of the areas for new individuals looking at conferences, looking at Fitness Fest to consider it, to really strongly consider uh, attending for the ability to network easily, be able to yeah. meet instructors uh, in almost a, a small group setting. Uh, some of them are, are, are big. You know, I've, I've seen the rooms for, we'll say, Dr. Len Kravitz, and it's a little <laughs> bit harder to get to him because he's a, a superstar. And uh, maybe, maybe Janice will share my story with uh, <laughs> the first time I met him. <laughs> but um, 
it's definitely of a positive of uh, fitness fest and conferences. And uh, I think something to, to touch on here, Janice, how do you usually pitch to people that haven't been to fitness fest before? Do you use other speakers, people that have attended before to kind of say, hey, you really need to check this out? Or what is part of your pitch to them or why they should attend? I, I think word of mouth is already out there. I mean, I, I often have some, I'm going to use like, let's say Fraser Quelch, who's the co-founder of TRX. And and I reached out to him because I wanted him to be, I've always wanted him to be um, a presenter at Fitness Fest. So I reached out to him with him, um, messenger for Facebook. He, he uh, gave me his phone number right away. We talked the very next day and he said, I've heard so many great things about you. And like, I'm like, wow, you have, you know? So the word gets out when you're good to people and when you're kind to people and when you treat people like a good human being that, that the way, in the way you would like to get treated. So I think the word of mouth from other presenters, I know that people, you know, presenters like, you know, June Khan and, and, and like you said, Dr. Len Kravitz, I, I know that they're not to, to, you know, to make myself all, all that, but I know they say such amazing things about us and, and, it, and, they, and they mean it. And these are people who internationally go to tons and tons of conferences and present at co- tons of conferences all over the world, really. So the word of mouth um, spreading um, it is great. And who knows who's saying what uh, out there, but from what I hear, you know, great, we've got the integrity and all that. So, so that's always a great way to get the word out. But as far as us, us pitching um, to people who've never heard of us, like we've touched on, it's, it's the connection, it's the great variety, it's the great, amazing presenters who are very knowledgeable in what they speak of, but they're also very approachable and really want to help. So we really pride ourselves in selecting those type of people. And, you know, for new instructors or trainers, they are going to love the motivation, the inspiration, the fun, the energy, um, so many different formats. And some, they may go, wow, I never thought I would, you know, want to teach what's pet pound or what, whatever, or I would never know that I wanted to go this direction. And that's another thing that the fitness best and other conference will, will do for you. They will, they will inspire you to either continue with that particular craft or format, or they will inspire you to do something completely different in addition, or maybe shift, maybe change. Uh, so new formats, new certifications, great networking experiences. Oh, I can get a job at EO. So I can get a, you know, I I met the manager of such and such, or I want to also personal train, not just group fitness. And, and in this, you know, what's going on with the world right now, um, fitness professionals, unless you are on top of your game, unless you pivot and unless you make some changes, you're not going to make it. You have got to expand your horizons. You've got to expand your your knowledge and look at some different options, whether it's virtual and teaching live, whether it's personal training, whether it's looking more at an older adult certification. Um, There's so many opportunities out there. And this is a great field to be in now. Our communities need us more than ever. You know, our poor older adults, let's just take them again is the ones that are living in the retirement homes who they're not, you know, allowing to, to gather and exercise together. What is going on with their quality of life? It's so sad. So they need us. Um, everyone does. So it's a great time to be a fitness professional and it's a great time to catch up with fitness fest. Um, we are going virtual in April because we need to, but there's also a great way virtually we're going to make things this year as far as more interactive more interactions, more interactive, and you'll, you'll also meet some great connections and um, get some great continuing education credits. And then in September, we will gather live at the Sheridan in Phoenix. So that's what's going on with us in 2021. Good, good. A lot to think about there, but, uh, you know, I, you already touched on the unique factors of Fitness Fest. Uh, So I think that this is going to really take us to our podcast takeaway. So uh, this is really uh, another spot for our guests to 
uh, provide insight for the industry, for individuals tuning in, and hopefully uh, provide a perspective that's different than any of the other guests that have come on the Kips podcast, just because we have an assortment. We have people from personal training. We have people from manufacturing. We have group fitness, a wide variety. So from your end, Janice, what are your thoughts on the fitness industry moving forward into 2021? Well, stay on top of your game for online, um, you know, virtual training and online stuff and virtual stuff because it ain't going away even, even when and if we get back to normal, normal, normal. It's not going away. A lot of people are liking it. Some people are preferring it. Um, they're finding the convenience of it. So learn it, live it. There's a lot of resources out there. In particular, you, Tyler, can give them lots of free <laughs> tutorials and lots of information on that. There's the little plug for you. And that was not it. pre-planned. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but it, it's true. Tyler has helped our business so much as far as the, the virtual the virtual learning and the, and the, and and the way we pulled off our September virtual event, we couldn't have done it without them, to say the least. So certainly that aspect. Um, older adults, Aqua is really big right now too. Mm -hmm. And just before COVID hit, I had the even though I've been training people for tw twenty five years, uh, right before COVID hit, I had my best year ever. I have an eight hour um, certification in aqua. It's very, it's very in intensive. It's, it's, it's lots of choreography, lots of, um, of talking about transitions and modifications and lot. And, and so anyways, it's very complete course. And I was on a roll. I was, I was starting to go out of state and um, I had so many that year of 2019 started to, of course, to get into 2020 and everything had to be put on hold. Um, we did a hybrid one last fall and then Tyler helped me put my entire Aqua Progressions One certification online. So um, there's my little plug on that, but I do, I do feel that Aqua, whether it's an outdoor pool, an indoor pool, all over the country, uh, a lot of older adults, but people all of all ages, it, it's enjoyable. It's very, um, so many benefits for it for all ages. So I think that is popular and, um, and, and very, I don't want to say trending, but uh, it, it just was getting so popular and it's, it's, it's getting, it's getting, it'll come back. It's coming back now. And so mm -hmm. that is something that people should keep an eye on. And um I usually don't ask follow-up questions on the podcast takeaway. So here's a first, Janice, just you pulling this out of me. For people in the <laughs> aqua field, what kind of, we'll say resources, because, okay, I'm going to paint a picture here. For aqua right now, I think that in general, it's kind of not a part of a gym facility because of um, restrictions on the state, uh, gym by gym basis. Um, and not, well, we don't want to get into uh, the politics of that, but I think that the point that I'm trying to make is that there's an opportunity there. So how can, in your opinion, instructors that potentially have never thought about Aqua or that are teaching Aqua, how do you think that they can take advantage of this opportunity to uh, potentially grow an Aqua business? Well, they certainly can go to fitnessfest.org and find the aqua and uh and then find my blogs and vlogs uh, um been doing um some some great blogs on on uh using equipment safety shoulders continuing to do that I'm, I'm continuing to build a library on that and tyler and i actually just recently put together a bunch of little videos for um training on aqua so certainly check out my resources, please. And, and I would love to chat with you as well about that. Um, people listening in the audience, because I am an expert on it. I mean, I'm a doing, I've been teaching that for almost 35 years. Mm. So, um, and I love it and it's super rewarding. So if you're looking to get in that is very, very rewarding. So, um, but if you want to start your own thing, besides, of course, first getting some training, getting my certification, uh, you know, I started in my friend's backyard. Mm. So that is how I started in 1985, 1986. So 
there are restrictions going on and it, it does kind of blow me away uh, that more pools are not opening up because you're living in bleach for God's sakes. Isn't the chlorine going to save you? But I should probably not be saying that out loud, but I just did. <laughs> so, um, but there's many, there's many opportunities out there. And uh, you know, if you want to start your own thing and, and start in a friend's pool or a community pool, or there's so many in Arizona in particular, there's so many retirement communities that have pools. So lots of opportunities in that. Good, 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 good. So um, as we wrap things up here, Janice, I know we, we've plugged it a few times, but uh, give <laughs> uh, the social media information for Fitness Fest, Facebook, Instagram, uh, website, um, and also um, any courses that you are you have coming up as well, again. So fitness, fitnessfest.org is our website. And fitness.events is uh, Instagram mm -hmm. and forward slash fitness fest Facebook. So you can follow us. We've got some, you know, we've got some great content. Uh, we've got some great information. We always post, of course, specials that are going on. We've often got specials going on. We would love you to go to our website at fitnessfest.org. And um, there's some, some free free stuff to give away to put your, your name and email in there. Mm -hmm. we, we won't, you know, over indate you with a bunch of CRAP. We've got good stuff. So <laughs> certainly get on our mailing list because we're big on emails and um, some people may or may not use that form, but you know, we've got a following and we, we love to send some great content out via email. Um, our next event is April 22nd through the 25th our virtual event. We've got some great specials and prices going on on that right now. We've got an amazing lineup of 50 presenters, great, great, great different workshops and seminars. We've got six amazing pre-conferences that are on sale through the month of February. I don't know when this will air, but um, we've got TRX, we've got Yoga Fit, we've got my one of my aquas, we've got Zumba, we've got Bar Above. I think I hit them all. Oh, Functional Aging older adults. So um, that's what we've got for the April 22nd, but then the three day weekend, just about a hundred different workshops to choose from. And, and they're all going to be recorded. So of course we can't, you know, watch a hundred at once, but um, they'll all be saved for you too. So, and then September 9th through the 12th, we will be live in person hugging at the Sheridan um, in Mesa, Arizona, which is just outside of Phoenix, Arizona. And September is a beautiful time to come to Phoenix. So those are the things that we've got lined up uh, so far for 2021. And then my aqua certification online. Perfect. 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 That was the last piece that uh, wanted to make sure people knew that we're listening. Janice is the course instructor for the KIPS Aqua Progression online course. Uh, great content in there, fully online. Uh, take it, learn it, breathe it, and also connect with Janice on it because she will just give you more information in the aqua realm that will just help you expand your business, help your instruction, all those kinds of things. Make sure you check out Fitness Fest coming up virtual. Follow them on social media. Janice, thank you again for coming on the podcast, sharing all that information, and of course, being a good friend. Thank you so much, Tyler, for being uh, a great resource and a great friend and for allowing me to speak my speak my mind on your podcast. Appreciate it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>